I'm Allegra Cooksell and I'm a PhD student in the History Department and I work on conceptions of modernist time around the turn of the 19th and early 20th centuries, looking at a spatial idea of time influenced by developments in science and then how that's expressed in art, literature and music. Um, I'm Will Carruthers, uh, I'm a PhD student in the Department of History and Philosophy of Science where I research the history of Egyptology in sort of the mid 20th century and in particular sort of around the colonial, post-colonial turn in Egypt. I'm Julie Lawrence, I'm a PhD student in Biological Anthropology. My PhD is on the evolution of the skull, but before that I worked in history and philosophy of science on the history of anthropology. So essentially, in, I'm now in my third year here, in my first year I sort of organised this sort of informal reading group on the histories of archaeology and anthropology in the HPS department, which is my department, because um, there really wasn't anything like that around, and there was sort of a small group of people working in that area. Um, and then I worked away during my second year, and I was in Cairo, and while I was over there, I was sort of wondering if I wanted to run that again. And my supervisor suggested that I apply to Crash for money, which meant that I then had to find other people to help, essentially, which turned out to be a very good thing, because I think there's a lot going on in Cambridge, but one of the issues is you don't always know what that is, and so somewhere like Crash can help to bring that together. So I sort of got into contact with Julie, and then also Allegra, and so we now have this uh, research group called Field Notes, and it turns out that there are quite a few other people who are also interested in what we're doing. So, Broadly speaking, we're looking at the histories of anthropology and archaeology, so we try to kind of combine the two in a lot of our yeah. lecture sessions. But last term, just by happenstance, it was kind of heavily archaeologically based. Mm -hmm. There's more <laughs> anthropology coming up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, we get people coming from a variety of disciplines from, I think we had someone from law, and then there was a person from music and the English department. So yeah. we seem to have quite a sort of multidisciplinary conversation. Classics as well. Yeah. It's because we have the broader themes. So the idea of collecting kind of appeals to not only archaeologists, but anthropologists, historians, like a wide range of people we don't even think might be interested in it. But if you have a good title and a, an interesting speaker. The idea is it's set up with broad structuring themes each fortnight. So I think that really sort of does draw people in. Mm -hmm. I think also part of what we're trying to do is draw out the histories of the disciplines from within the disciplines themselves. Mm -hmm. So that idea is, has a lot of kind of cachet at the moment. I think it's, it's, well for someone like me that's really important because sort of, unlike Julie, I, did, I sort of did the opposite to Julie. So I was trained as an archaeologist and then sort of, I did a, a research MA at UCL and I was going to do an archaeology PhD. But my PhD sort of turned into a history of science PhD while I was doing that. So I ended up in the history of science department. So you sort of realise that well, in archaeology actually at the moment there's, there's like growing interest in the history of the discipline just as part of the general sort of reflexive turn in archaeology I guess mm -hmm. and in anthropology. So it's sort of interesting that at the same time there's this interest in those disciplines from historical fields as well. So it's sort of like the really, it's a really good moment to um, draw those two interest groups together, I think. And, I, you know, this is just like a really productive place to do that. I'm, s I'm selfishly looking forward to the the talk on the popularisation of Atapuerca, because I think that's something that appeals to okay. anthropologists because it's just an iconic site. Um, so. And also Rob Foley. Yeah, Rob Foley will be the discussion. Yeah, so he's, well, he's professor of sort of evolution, mm -hmm. evolutionary and anthropology. The lecture in bioanthropology. Yeah. So. so it's, again, it's sort of like going to be this interesting conversation between a, a historian of science and mm -hmm. someone like a a professional in the field they're talking about, which I think can lead to really interesting discussions. Yeah. Um, then we have people like I mean Simon Schaffer is a discussant at some point, so is Eleanor Robson, and you've 
you've got people um, like Amara Thornton, who was at UCL, who was who's like one of the first people there to have really done history of archaeology stuff mm -hmm. properly, I think, which is to say like sort of professionally. So I think there are some interesting talks this time. It's so it's it's a separate thing for each fortnight. But what I think what I think what's becoming clear is that you sort to uh, you, you sort of start to see that there are some other broader sort of analytical things mm -hmm. that emerge. Um, you, you find terms like practice and representation bandied around a lot at mm -hmm. the moment and they have been for a while, right? But I, I do think you sort of start to see the, the importance of what representations do for the disciplines and the work they do for the disciplines and how they've done that. And um, how that's sort of becoming vital to explaining what they do, especially if you're looking at them from outside, actually. Because I don't know if from the inside everyone would necessarily consider that. They probably aren't looking for representations, full stop. You know. I think also materiality is one of the focuses that mm. has sort of been an undercurrent throughout, but maybe not something that we emphasize as overtly as yeah. say the things group on material mm. culture. Um, so it's just interesting to see the ways that people who are investigating disciplines from say an academic or kind of pedagogic standpoint, like how are we teaching them, use material objects or the way that those are re-represented in various yeah. ways. No, absolutely. And again, it's sort of nice that in Crash there are other people sort of running these other groups that sort of do actually <laughs> overlap mm -hmm. with that theme and that topic. So um, there's sort of a community of interest. I think one of the other really interesting things for me is that um, we have like this online presence and yeah. I'm sort of have been really cynical about how useful. Yeah, so. but it's sort of interesting, because we have this blog and like looking at the statistics of where people are visiting from. Which is slightly addicting. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just really interesting to see that you have people looking at this thing from basically the entire world. Yes, and when we started we didn't think that we would have that many readers. It's a good way to disseminate what we're doing outside the Cambridge community. And I think, because we've been recording most of the seminars. Mm -hmm. And again, they, they, actually, people seem to have been downloading them quite a lot, mm -hmm. which means that it's spreading around, which, again, it, it's nice to know that there's like this community of interest out there, I think. Yeah. I think the group is helpful in the sense that it allows also people working in different periods to kind of communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my MPhil in the history department, but in modern European history, but I was basically working on the history of Egyptology, and I felt really isolated during my year there because no one else was doing anything similar. So I think one thing that we can do is sort of provide this focal point for people to kind of tap into when they need to or, or yeah. want inspiration, and talking to people working on 18th century um, antiquarianism, and that sort of thing can give you a lot of um, insight into your own period, even if it is. You know, 250 years later. And that's the way it has worked in all the sessions. People presenting present their work and get feedback from the audience saying, have you considered this? And people seem to come along in the audience saying, I'm working on something that mm -hmm. I thought would be relevant with, mm -hmm. in regard to your talk. Or um, I thought your talk their own be questions. Yeah. And it's so much more relevant than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even just putting those two people together within one session would should do something for Cambridge and yeah those individual research. Well, I think there's like a lot of very disparate expertise here at the moment and so it sort of does bring that together and people obviously then have these contacts they make as a result which can only be a good thing. Well we hope you all come out on Thursdays at 1.30 every other week to our seminar. And please read our blog which is crashfieldnotes.wordpress.com